Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend and I hope that you continue to be safe and I trust you were able to enjoy a church service yesterday, whether it was in person or on a digital campus. And I hope and I pray that you continue to grow in your relationship with the Lord. Well, I want to continue our study on the life of Joseph. The goal this week is to finish this study. Uh, we've been going through this for about two and a half weeks. Last week was a tough week as far as just getting some momentum going through the day. So we only did two. So I'm going to cover two chapters today, 46 and 47, because most of chapter 46, or at least half of it is a genealogy. So we can walk through that quickly. So why don't you get your Bibles and turn to Genesis chapter 46 and 47. Going to give you a little bit of homework as you read this today. Hopefully that you'll be able to enjoy this study on the life of Joseph. We've covered a lot about him and learned a lot about him from his his willingness to stir the pot and the brother's jealousy in 37 through him doing certain actions and then being sold into slavery and then being blamed for something he didn't do. And then he was still known as a man of God during difficult times. He showed his brother's hospitality, even though that brothers didn't know it was him. He gave forgiveness instead of seeking revenge and he's finding freedom and forgiveness. So that's really the road that we've been traveling on. So Genesis is 46 and 47 I want to ask you a question if you could meet with anybody if you could give a, a hug and be re reunited with anyone after this pandemic who'd be the first person that you choose just imagine how sweet it would be as I go and scroll on Facebook or I hear stories and you know this person hasn't seen or been near family members or friends for over a year and they are talking about their excitement to be able to be reunited with them. Just imagine how excited Jacob and Joseph are going to be as they're reunited because Jacob thought Joseph has been uh, long gone, uh, passed away for years upon years. So in Genesis 46, Jacob has moved to Egypt. He's packed all of his belongings. And just imagine how difficult that would be. If we would move, we would call a get a U-Haul or we would call a moving company and three, four, five guys would come in, move all our stuff and we'd follow in the car and and then we get to a new house, they'd unload it and they'd walk away and that would be moving. That's not how they did it back in the Old Testament times for sure. But Jacob, so excited to get to see Joseph that he's moved all of his things to Egypt because the famine is so bad. Now, as Jacob is going from the promised land to Egypt, God gives him a promise. He says that, Jacob, you're going to die in Egypt, but you're not going to die alone. You're going to die with Joseph being being there with you. Now, in Genesis 46, Joseph has a sweet reunion with his father and he hasn't seen in years. Let's go to Genesis 47. Joseph's brothers, they are now all of his family, all of Joseph's family, or I should say Jacob's family, is now in Egypt and they're living there. And Joseph says to them, don't tell Pharaoh what you're going to do. Come tell Pharaoh that you're presenting yourself as a servant and as shepherds. And this was a great challenge to me as I read this and thought about this, that I, I need to be one person that can serve someone else. I can't serve everybody, but I can serve one person. I can serve two people. And it's a great reminder that I need to help those and we are called to help one another. So in Genesis 46, the famine is so bad People are trading their livestock for food because they've run out of money. So they're bringing their livestock to Joseph. They're bringing their land. They're bartering their land. They're selling their land. <clears throat> and Joseph still has this food. Everyone else is hungry. So the Pharaoh's influence or his land is continuing to get bigger and bigger because people are selling acreages of land just to get enough food to survive a, a week or a month or even a year. So we find out in Genesis 47 that Jacob is 130 years old when he gets to Egypt. He's, he lives for 17 years in Egypt before he passes away. 
Now, Jacob, as he is on his deathbed at the end of 47, he makes Joseph and the sons give him a promise, make him a promise that he will not be buried in Egypt, but that they will take him back to the promised land. Now, I could take you back to Genesis 46 and remind you of God's promise to Jacob that Jacob is going to die in Egypt, but Joseph is going to be there. Now, Jacob turns around and says, please don't leave me here. I want to be buried in the land <clears throat> that God has promised me. And so you see the sons at the end of 47 make this promise to their father, and then their father passes away. Two challenges for us today that I saw this because we covered two chapters. The first challenge is for us to remember that God does not work on our time frame. As I read Genesis 46 and 47, we covered 17 years in a matter of five or six minutes. And when we read scripture, we, we often forget whether it's in the life of Joseph, or I'm thinking about what we covered in our service yesterday in the life of Daniel, that we read through scripture so easily. And we forget that many times God does not work on our time frame. He works and accomplishes his good, pleasing, and perfect will when it's his time frame. So the one question I have for you is, are you trusting in God's promises on God's timetable? The second question I have for you is, who can you serve today? The brothers came into Egypt saying, we, we came to be servants. We didn't come to be slaves. We came to be servants. We came to serve you. And that's a great reminder and a challenge for me. And I hope it's a challenge for you. Who is in your network of relationships that you can take a few moments today and you can bless by doing something for them? You can serve them. You can help them get their groceries. You can help them shovel some snow that's melting. You can help them find things and start to clean up the house. I don't know what that is, but it's a great challenge that we are here to serve one another. So I hope that you have a great Monday. I hope that you know the promises of God, that you can trust in the promises of God on God's time frame, and that you are able to find somebody to serve today. If I can help you in any way, if you need something, please reach out and I will do the best I can do to help meet that need. Hope you have a great Monday. I'll see you back here tomorrow morning for Genesis chapter 48. Have a great Monday.